Oh, here's the other one. Okay, yes. Here we go. It's over here. <laughs> Please speak into the lapel phone. Uh, how many? How many? How many? How many? Not this one. How many? Uh, how many joules are we talking about? If if it was like what? Are, what did you say? How many tons of explosive nine, nine. That's and a rough then, estimate. And then like, for how much? energy would that be if all that exploded? Was oh. that way more than enough to explode? It's way more than enough. Good it, question. The dust, that was the dust from both buildings? Oh, mm -hmm. um, yes, actually. This would be the one sample that was scooped up within 10 minutes um, would tell us. But So it would be basically from the towers. And it's a real rough estimate, but it's it's plenty of material. Yeah. The, apparently, they it's what you call uh, I'm going to go sit down. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Sorry. I wanted to ask you something, though. This is the young man that was telling me that he was just on the fence, not sure what sort of... What do you think about it? Uh, it's fascinating, actually. Uh, I don't know where those little balls of the iron could have come from. Very good. Would you like to see who made this material? This red material? Uh, yeah, is it that guy who was emailing me? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Whoa! I think we have an answer. <laughs> I have thought of that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, there's plenty. And uh, I, it's like overkill. Or for whatever they did, they put a lot in there. Is this going to help if he talks into both mics? Okay, he says yes. Um, I'd like to ask, uh, it's my understanding that one of the original uh, reports from NIST said that one of the mis mysteries of, the, the biggest mysteries was where the sulfur got, how the sulfur got into the steel. And I noticed that in all your diagrams, sulfur was missing. So what, what would have been necessary? Is it, does it suggest possibly that there was more than one kind of material used as an incendiary, as an incendiary or something like that? Exactly. So, okay, well then I guess that answers that. It does. <laughs> it does suggest there's more than one type of Because you don't, you don't mention it at all. Well, that's a, you know, it's a good point. I, I showed that flowing material, and uh, it, it is in earlier papers that we mentioned this uh, thermite, that would be conventional thermite with sulfur added would produce molten iron that stays liquid at the orange temperature as observed as this uh, material flows out of the south tower. That would almost certainly be ordinary thermite with sulfur added. And then this other is present unexploded, you see, which I think is even stronger evidence. So you need a slow exothermic for some of it. That seems to be the case. It seems they used other, uh, uh, you know, different formulations, slow, fast. Let me mention one other thing. It's quite possible that conventional explosives were used in addition to these explosives, but we don't have the evidence for that. Again, my sense is that having found this explosive red material still active in the dust, you know, several samples repeated by a scientist in France and in New Hampshire, replicated and confirmed these essential details that we have now a case to proceed with a criminal investigation and not to do so would itself be criminal. I, I, don't, I don't have a question so much as an addition which may clarify some things for some people. Uh, a couple of years before 9-11, the uh, World Trade Center decided they wanted to put new fireproofing on some of the steel. And that process involved uh, taking off the old fireproofing, perhaps painting on the nanothermite, uh, putting the new fireproofing on. Uh, but Kevin Ryan, an associate of, of uh, Dr. Jones, uh, puts a very good diagram together that shows you that the new fireproofing only went on, mainly went on to the floors where the planes hit. <laughs> and that when they measured the fireproofing, it was four inches thick instead of the two inches that it should have been. So that might give you some idea of how this was done. Uh, the last point I would say is that many people don't know that Marvin Bush, the president's brother, ran the security company that was in charge of the World Trade Centers at the time when the work was done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I understand that you are able to discredit the notion in World Trade Center 7 that there was enough like fuel to 
to cause the beams to become weak enough to collapse. However, on the um, the two the two towers, there was a jet. Were you able to discredit the notion that enough jet fuel would have caused the inner the inner uh, core to become weak enough to collapse? Good question. How about the jet fuel in the towers? This checked on this and studied it. I believe they are correct when they say that that jet fuel would burn up within 20 minutes. Oh, it was the number 15 or 10. It was very rapid, certainly less than 20 minutes. The buildings did not come down in that time frame. So, so see, it rolls out a direct connection to the fuel. Thank you. Thank you. The jet fuel burned out too fast. The buildings stayed standing. And then, of course, there's the difficulty in the way the buildings came down. We discussed that some here. Further discussion again in the Journal of Nylon Studies and in the uh, 14 points paper. I'm going to come over closer and both these. Well, I came uh, in here uh, neutral, but I found your evidence uh, very convincing. And uh, I think that... Uh, of course. Thank the data. Yeah. Well, exactly, exactly. And uh, it seems that the key is identifying that Martin that uh, emailed you because that should trait I trace it right back to the perpetrator's <coughs> arm. That's an interesting it. point, yes. This guy uh, needs to be subpoenaed. <laughs> Maybe some, uh, I'm just going to say something, I don't believe in this, but I just as a little humor here. Maybe some enhanced interrogation. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I, I do not support enhanced interrogation <laughs> <laughs> okay, my question is, um, it's intrigued me that um, they found molten metal for, what was it, months after the, uh, the collapse of the towers uh, in the basements. And it, does that um, indicate uh, some kind of continuing chemical reaction uh, going on with possible you know, a lot of thermite or something, just continuing to, to react. I think so. Jim, would you have a more, have you thought about that? Um, oh, no, probably not as much as um, you or Kevin okay, has thought, thought about that. Particular thought, thought, thought about that, but yeah, there was um, quite, a, a, quite a wishes brew with, you know, all these reactive, um, uh, you know, if there's still elemental aluminum, if there's, you know, these hot spots. And maybe even other things like if there was maybe um, barium or something that was uh, that there's unusually high levels of barium, which is a toxic metal that's used as an accelerant or to, to, uh, used in additives to um, aluminothermic um, preparations. So, um, and one of the papers that um, Stephen and, and Kevin and, and uh, James Gorley published, uh, Environmental Anomalies, looks at exactly that issue of how there's, if you look at the um, outgassing and the particulate emissions from ground zero, the, the two curves um, don't even cor correlate with each other. So you get these these particulate these bursts of particulate matters going going on, you know, these uh, sporadically, you know, for a couple of days, and then you know weeks go by. And in the meantime, there's these the, these outgassings of these um, other uh, these other kinds of compounds um, that doesn't relate to that. So it seems like there's lots lots of stuff going on in the rubble um, that could that does, does seem to be some kind of ongoing chemical reactions. So. Has with thermite. Uh -huh. Yeah, on barium, when, when you mix barium with, the, with the therm, like a conventional thermite, it causes, it looks much more like a conventional flame. It, it increases the, the, the flamingness of it. And one possibility is that they used the, the, the barium was mixed with this, um, this more conventional um, thermitic um, uh, coating of the, of the beams, and, it, and, and then it would just um, be even more um, disguised because um, even if somebody was there to witness it, it would just look more like a, just regular flames. That's, it wouldn't have such a distinctive sparking action that, that it looks more like thermite.